Well, first of all, let me say how delighted I am to be here with Sadhguru and also how delighted I am to be here at the Economic Conclave. To cut a long story short, in 2007, two years into building the Huffington Post, I collapsed from burnout, sleep deprivation and exhaustion. I hit my head on my desk, broke my cheekbone, and that was probably the best thing that happened to me <laughs> because it woke me up. I can show you a million people who just with a simple investment of fifteen, twenty minutes in a day towards their meditative processes, suddenly their sleep quota has dropped anywhere between one to four hours, depending on how much they were sleeping earlier. And of course, the type of food that you're consuming, the type of thought process, the type of emotion, all that you have. So if you want to be at ease, the most important thing is a vibrant body, an open mind, a loving heart, and intensity of energy in the system. If these things, if you manage on a daily basis, moment to moment, you will see the amount of maintenance that you need on the body will come down dramatically. Why couldn't the whole thing be done in a few more extra online classes? Because uh, what we want to do here is not to propound a philosophy, not to teach you a new ideology, not to convert you into a new religion, not even to give you a teaching. This is a transmission. If uh, whatever we wish to do could be done by talking to you, we would have continued talking to you online. So because there is something that cannot be communicated in words, that's why we brought you here. Because this is live, you're supposed to be alive to it. When you sit here, you sit here as a piece of life. Because we can only work with life. Are you ready? If you come here as a throbbing piece of life, tomorrow, will be a spectacular day for you. If one has a certain amount of mastery over one's physical body, fifteen to twenty percent of one's life and destiny will be in your hands. If you have a certain mastery over your mind, fifty to sixty percent of your life and destiny will be in your hands. If you have mastery over your life energies, one hundred percent of your life and destiny will be in your hands. How much of it are you going to take charge of is the question. First of all, in this whole social humdrum and economic circus, most people have forgotten it's about life. Hmm? How much time and energy is invested Towards the well-being of this life, you must look at it. The litmus test is just this. From yesterday to today, are you little more joyful or little more pleasant within you? There are many things you can do. Either you want to work upon yourself, we can help you with that. Or you want to work to create something in the world, we can help you with that. Whatever you prefer can be done, but the most important thing is <coughs> that you as a life should be enhanced. So what's ticking away is not the clock, what is ticking away is life, isn't it? Because in ancient
ancient times we were a great nation. It is not just going to happen, it needs striving, even if we have the fundamentals. Now, coming to soft power or, you know, reaching out to the world through culture, spirituality, music, dance and various other things, I think the most important thing in my opinion is uh, that we should remove the tag Indian from it. They are seeking for pleasantness and profoundness of life. Somebody thinks it's in the temple, somebody thinks it's in the bottle, but they are seeking the same thing. There is a window of somewhere between fifteen to thirty years' time. In this, if we don't make a serious turnaround in the human consciousness, you will see ninety percent of humanity will be on chemicals. Already to grow food we use chemicals, to purify water we use chemicals, our air is full of chemicals, water is full of chemicals and everybody is on some kind of medication. Before a large number of human beings or a huge percentage of human beings become chemically controlled, we must turn human consciousness around. This is the responsibility of this generation. This is our time on the planet. What are we going to make out of it is our business. Please, let's make it happen. Nationalism as an idea is a very Western idea. For us, our sense of nationalism, as David rightly put it, it's a culture. What culture of what? Culture of seeking, culture of knowing, culture of truth, culture of liberation. And that's what we should stick to because that is where the future of the world is. To the entire rally for rivers, the significance of it is just this. It is uh, not economy versus ecology, but doing ecology in an economically sensitive way. This is not a protest, this is not some kind of a agitation, this is to see how to engineer our nation in such a way that we will be a sustainable nation, at the same time a progressive nation. We are looking at projects here which will be mainly people movement. It is a people's movement that we can instigate with some kind of incentives from the government for two to three years, a limited amount of time. Within three years if people shift to certain type of forestry crops and other things where farmers' income can rise in a big way. Just fixing MSP, just this support, that support, loan waiver is not really working. You just have to make living on the land a lucrative process. Uh, so, this covers a whole range of things, human… fundamentally human well-being, the protecting the soil and the planet and the… Uh, allowing the human being to live on it. This strange idea that we got somehow we can destroy the planet and live well uh, <laughs> has to go, especially in a country like this where the population pressure on the land is so heavy, so immensely heavy. If we don't do this now, we won't have a nation left actually because the way we have depleted our soil and our natural resources is so very big.